Hi Floss Tube. my name is Sarah and welcome to episode number four of Tea and Stitches. Today is Saturday, September the 18th and it is just before noon. So welcome everyone, all new and returning viewers. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. So I don't know how long this episode is going to be today. I might get chatty again like I did in the last one. I don't have an absolute ton to show you, but I like doing these every week to keep myself accountable, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a bit of an odd week for me this week. Um, I am very much a creature of habit. I like, I don't like my routine messed with. You know, I know that Monday through Friday, I work from 11 till 7. On the days I have to go into the office on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, I need to leave at like, you know, uh, what time would I leave? Just before 10 to get to the office. And, uh, you know, I know what time I get home and have dinner and, and all, like, I, even to the point my husband makes fun of me, but um, because he does and because he's my husband and he's allowed to, that even eating wise, like I would be happy to eat the same thing every single day. Like every day for lunch to the office, I take like a peanut butter sandwich and cookies and I have the palate of a five-year-old, you guys, no joke. <laughs> I am not a fancy person when it comes to food, but that's how much I like routine. I don't like to have to think about something to, you know, I know that sounds bad, but I think if any of you feel the same way, you might understand what I'm saying. So when my routine gets thrown off because something changes or I have an appointment, it really kind of, I feel like it throws my whole day off for whatever reason. So this week that happened. <clears throat> um, my coworker and I, there's the two of us, we work together and we are kind of customer service frontline um, we, I work in the insolvency bankruptcy industry and, uh, we are potential clients call in and me and my coworker are first on the phone to answer the phone. How can we help you? That kind of thing. And because of something that happened personally in her family, um, she was off work on Monday and Tuesday. So my manager, um, we found this out on Sunday. So my manager, uh, messaged me on Sunday and asked if I would mind because my coworker usually does the eight till four o'clock shift and then I'm in from 11 till seven. She asked if I would come in and do nine to five just to kind of give the bulk of coverage like during the important parts of the day essentially. So I said, of course it was no problem. Like I, I am more than happy to help. So don't think I'd, I'd do it kicking and screaming. It's just <laughs> when it happens, I'm like, okay, <laughs> what's going on here? So anyway, um, I ended up having to go into work on Monday and Tuesday from nine to five, which I, on one hand was great because I finished work at five o'clock. Normally I finish work at seven o'clock. So finishing earlier is always nice. And I am much more of a morning person. So to get like a good chunk of my work done before like noon is fantastic. But on the other hand, it's like, okay, it threw off my routine. Like typically in the mornings, because I don't start till 11, I don't have to leave the house until 10 in the morning. And I'm usually up between 6.30, 7 o'clock. So I have time. I usually sit and listen to an audiobook, do some stitching, you know, then go and have my shower. Like, you know, while I'm stitching, have my morning coffee, then, you know, get showered and head off to work. Um, you know, so when that's thrown off, I was like, okay, what's happening now? <laughs> And then on Thursday, I had an appointment with my optometrist in the morning. So that was a whole thing. Um, anyway, my eyes are fun. I do. I usually wear glasses and I started recording this with my glasses on. And I think I might have recorded a couple other episodes with my glasses on. The issue is, is the glare because I'm sitting in front of a window. It was distracting to me. So I'm assuming it would be distracting to you guys. So I can see without them, which is fine. But she said, like, my eyesight hasn't really changed. So that's all good. And then, yeah, so now it's Saturday. Um, so I feel like I didn't get a lot of stitching done, but now that I'm looking at what I've done, I got more done than I thought I did. And I think that by having this focus project every month, that's making a big difference because we don't know day to day what could change, right? So anyway, that is that. That's kind of just the life stuff that's been happening. And yeah, so let's get into the stitching. Actually, before I do that, Tea of the day isn't a tea again, guys. It is a pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks. I had to go out this morning. We went to do some errands, went to go see my aunt. So I stopped at Starbucks for her because it's like her favorite thing ever. So I stopped for her. And since I was stopping for her, I, I coffee doesn't like to travel alone. So I had to get a PSL for myself. So cheers. <laughs> so that's the tea of the day today. Although I'm going to hopefully be showing you guys next Saturday. I did order this week um, the uh, 
the fall sampler pack of teas from David's Teas. So I will show you that, uh, show you guys that next week. Um, I did, I do, did see that the advent calendar from David's Tea went on sale and I'm still really debating on it. I have gotten it for like the past like seven or eight years and I love it. It's a good calendar. However, it's $60 and I just don't know if I can justify that. You get 24 days of tea. So usually I can get two servings out of each container. So that's what, 48 servings of tea for $60? I get, don't get me wrong, it's good tea. The other thing that I am kind of hesitant about is not just the price, but the fact that year to year, the bulk of the teas that you're getting in the advent calendar are the same. I mean, they might add a few new ones, take out some older ones, what have you, but I just, I don't know. There's another tea company, I can't remember the name of it, um, I'll put the link to them below. They haven't released their advent calendar yet, but I know that they've done one the last number of years. And I might order from them next year just for the sole fact of getting something different. Do you know what I mean? Or I might order from them this year. And then I am actually hoping to kind of do a, is it Flossmas? <laughs> is that what it's called? Like a Vlogmas where I put up like a little five minute video every day because I am hoping to order, um, one of the advent cross stitch boxes from someone um at the end of this month so uh so I'm thinking about doing like like a little advent like the tea of the day and like the gift of the day kind of an idea anyway that's that's in the future that's months from now so but like I said next Saturday I will show you guys the teas that I got in that sampler pack so I'm very excited about that so enough rambling about random stuff let's get into the stitching so of course, the focus project of the month is Moons Out, Brooms Out by the Autumn Lane Stitchery. And I will post a picture of what the finished piece looks like up over here. I really love this piece. I've gotten a lot done this week. So sorry, it's still in the hoop because I didn't want to take it out because I'm going to work on it when I'm done, when I'm editing this. So I had the broom done last week along with part of her skirt. So now I've almost completed her dress. Like you can see, I've got my little thing, but I'm working on her other arm, which comes down here and then her hand sits right. Her hand sits right there. That's what that open part is right there. So yeah, so I am really liking this. And then I'm gonna start working on probably like her face and her hat and stuff like that and her hair. And then I want to get the moon behind her and then I'll start working on. I can't decide what I'm going to do after her, whether I'm going to go across and do the wording or whether I'm going to go down and do the tree and the houses. I might do the tree and houses because I think that they will be a little bit more boring because they're kind of like all still in these this color palette, these dark colors, whereas the wording is in those bright oranges. So I might save that for last just because I think it'll be a lot of fun. But um, yeah, I'm really, really pleased. So this is my focus project for the month. So how my focus project works is that um, I put 100 stitches into this every day as I can. There were a couple days this week that that didn't happen. I mean, I got like 50 or 60 stitches into it. And this would, would have been the only thing I stitched on. But I put, you know, I try to put 100 stitches into it every day. And then on Sundays, it is all that I work on on a Sunday. So in October, there will be a new focus project that you guys will be seeing next week. So I'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, so I am really, really happy with it. I think it looks fantastic. I just, just love it. I love her little feet. <laughs> you can, this is kind of what I love about cross stitch is like, as you're working on something, you can start to see this picture develop. And I just think it's, it's just so much fun and so relaxing. So yeah, so that is what I have done so far. And I'm stitching this on 14 count Ada, no surprise there, in like a navy bluish color. And this is pretty much the length of the piece. So really it doesn't go much further over this way or past the broom and then up and down you know what i mean like so at least now i know the it fits this way on on the piece of fabric which is fantastic so yeah so i'm really enjoying that and i'm using all the called floor all the called for dmc which is again the norm for me that's what i do so sorry let me put this away over there so the next thing that I, sh I, this I was working on last week and I showed you, and I got a little bit more of this done from the last time that I showed you. And this is um, Zodiac by Clouds Factory. Um, this is being stitched on 14 count Ada. In picture this plus um, the Haunted colorway, I think it's called. So I got finished. So I think I was just outlining this one last Saturday. 
So I finished this piece in here. I added this right here and this as well. And then I added, I started, I did the whole outline of this, of this big circle here. And now I've started to add in the flowers and then I'm going to put the little guy up over here. So, um, oh, I didn't put it up. This is the final piece. This is what the fi finished piece will look like. Um, it's a big, massive uh, finished piece because this is only like... <laughs> <laughs> two twelfths of it. Um, so yeah, it's going to be pretty epic when it's done. I really, really love it. Yeah. I think it's going to be super fantastic. So I think like before what I had done, when I started this guy, I went this way and I like stitched him first. Then I got into these ones and then I connected these two here and I just went back up and went this way. So I think what I'm going to do is when I finish stitching him inside here is I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to do it this way again, because I'll be honest, you guys, these pieces are boring. It's the, it's stitching these guys that are really fun, like all the colors and you get the little dude and stuff like that, like the little character. So I think by doing that will make it a bit more fun, like something to look forward to at the end of doing this little piece. Like I'll do each one as I go, but I think I'm going to work bottom to top um, as I go through them. So yeah really, really liking that piece as well. And then last but not least, this didn't get very much love at all this week, but um, I did give it some. And this is Walk Fast by Lindy Stitches. This is what the full pattern looks like. It's a really cute pattern. It's a Golden Girls quote. If you can't read it, it says, um, what's it say? It's like that old Scandinavian saying, you can lead a herring to water, but you have to walk fast or he'll die. <laughs> And I am a huge Golden Girls fan. I love the Golden Girls. So this is what I have done. This is the whole piece. So I'm working on this right now. Um, so you can see how intricate that border is. So I made an executive decision the other day. And what I did in this one this week um, so far is I finished stitching that little guy. And I finished stitching this little guy. And then I started working some more on the border. So what I decided to do is I'm going to just do the border. The border it's kind of mindless. Like once you get into the way it's stitched, it's pretty mindless to actually stitch. So I think what I'm going to do is do the border for the entire piece and just get it done. Cause I've been doing it in piecemeal. Like as I move my hoop, I'll be like, okay, I'll add some more border there. You know what I mean? Whereas I think let's just get the border done for the whole thing. So I still have to go down a bit more here and then over and then do this entire side essentially. So that's my goal is to get the border done. Then I can work on all of the fun inside parts of this sampler. So yeah, that's, that's my game plan. And I do have uh, my golden girls. I don't have a lot of um, needle keepers or needle minders, but my friend Rainy gave me that one and it says Mary friend miss and it's the golden girls. So I just think it's adorable. It had to, I had to use it on this piece. So yeah, very, very happy with that one. I love it again, 14 count Ada using, um, I think Lindy stitches calls for weeks dye works. Maybe I'm not absolutely certain, but she does have the DMC conversion, which is what I am using for that. And then the last bit of crafting that I got done are of course my socks. So I did get a fair bit knit on my socks because I take these, I was taking cross stitch to work for lunchtime, but realized it was just a lot to take and a lot of space and what have you. So I've gone back to bringing my socks with me and I really want to get these done and I'll get into my October plans in a minute, but I do want to get these done before the end of the month. This is the second sock, so I could potentially do it. So the stitch marker is where I was the last time I showed you. So I've gotten that much stitched. This is the leg. So this is the top of the leg, like the ribbing at the top and then the sock. So yeah, I haven't quite hit the heel yet. I have another two or three inches to go. I like a really long sock. So here's the first one for those of you who may not have seen last week. That's what the first, so you can see how long the leg is, right? So I do still have a little bit to go. Um, but yeah, so I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this quite a bit. Um, Sock knitting is just such a great mindless, for me at least, a very mindless activity because I've knit so many of them. Um, I was just over at my aunt's earlier today and she's been knitting a lot of socks and uh, it's kind of kept her busy during COVID because she lives alone and, you know, a lot of it we've been under lockdown for forever, it feels like. So over the last year and a half or since COVID kicked off back in March of 2020, she's knit 27 pairs of COVID socks, as she calls them. <laughs> 
So she was asking for some yarn. So I went through my stash this week and I sent her some, and I brought her some yarn. So that way she didn't have to order any. So that was fantastic. Excuse me. Hold on. Thank you. So that is everything that I have been working on this week. So all the patterns will be listed in the description box below. Oh, the sock. I am using a pattern on the sock and the pattern is called Blueberry Waffles and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Like I said, I will link it below so you guys can check it out if you want. It's a, like I said, it's a free pattern. It's a very, very easy sock pattern. Um, it's like knit two rows and then um, do ribbing, two by two ribbing for two rows, knit two rows, two by two ribbing. So it gives a really great, you know, sock that is very stretchy, which is fantastic. So yeah. And I forgot to show this off, but can we talk about this Peeps stitch marker, which I just think is the most adorable thing ever. I'm kind of addicted to Peeps. I know, I know they're not everybody's thing, but I love Peeps. <laughs> I know they're just pure sugar. I understand that, but they're still delicious. <laughs> um, so, <coughs> excuse me, some stash guys. I did buy some patterns this week. I will leave, of course, these all linked below as well. So uh, my friend Rainy, who I keep mentioning over at Rainy Day Reads, who just put up a new floss tube video, I will link that video directly below. Um, but check out her channel as well. She also talks about books. Um, so she pointed me towards this shop because she was ordering something from this shop. And then I went and looked and I found these two patterns. And I'm like, okay. So the first one is one of those in this house. They're both those in this house kind of... I don't know, would you call it a sampler? I, I don't know. It, wording, whatever, with little graphics on it. So the first one is Disney. So I'll pop a picture of it up here. So it's in this house, we do Disney, and then it's kind of got all the Disney sayings. Now, I'm not a Disney addict person. I like some of the Disney movies. I, the Little Mermaid is one of my favorites. Alice in Wonderland is one of my favorites. But I'm not that, Dis I, I want to go to Disney. I haven't been since I was 13. And my husband and I, we want to take a trip once the world opens up a little bit more. And we'd like to go. But I'm not one of those hardcore. My sister-in-law is and the kids like my niece and nephew and my brother. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I don't know if I'll get it done. I'd like to get this done in time for Christmas for them. I think it would be relatively easy to finish. Like it's mostly wording, you know what I mean? So I haven't decided, but this might be my November focus project. What do you guys think? Because October, I already have something, but if I can do this as my focus project for November, I can probably get it done. I had another project in mind, but I'd really like to get this one done for Christmas. Do you guys think? I think I can get it done. Like I said, it's mostly wording in small little motifs. Again, make it my focus project. I don't think that would be a problem. So we shall see. That That is what might end up happening. And then the other pattern that I got from this designer, which is New Dream Stitch, I'm sorry, I don't think I mentioned that, is another In This House, but this is In This House, we do Star Wars. So this is for my husband. Um, I'm not a Star Wars person. I have never seen a Star Wars movie in my life. I get the gist of them because I've seen Spaceballs about a gazillion times. <laughs> Best movie ever. <laughs> I love that movie. That and Robin Hood Men in Tights. Mel Brooks kills it in both those movies. So anyway, I got this one for my husband. So I'm going to stitch this one for him in January because his birthday is the end of January and I want to get it done for that. And this is going to go kind of in, into his man cave in the basement. So he is a huge Star Wars fanatic. Like I said, I am not. I've never seen one of the movies. However, this is how much I love him. My wedding ring, my actual wedding ring, not my engagement ring, but my wedding ring is actually Star Wars related. Don't know if you guys can see that. It actually says, I love you. And then on the inside, it says, I know. And my husband's says, I know on the outside and I love you on the inside. And I remember it was about two years after we got married. I was watching one of those. Do you guys remember that show that was on TLC, Four Weddings, where they had these like four couples, like four women go to each other's weddings and then vote on them. And then whoever had the most votes or got the highest score won an all expense paid honeymoon or something like that. I was addicted to watching that show. We were, I was watching it one day and my husband came in the room and he was kind of watching it. Well, when this couple walked into the reception hall, all the bridesmaids and groomsmen held up lightsabers. So they like walked through like this thing of like, my husband just looked at me and I'm like, no. <laughs> 
he if he could have gotten away with it at our wedding he absolutely would have <laughs> but anyway so yeah so I got this one for Garrett because I thought that he would really get a kick out of it and I did show it to him and he liked it and I'm like I want to stitch it for you for the basement he was very happy about that so um and the designer I don't know if it's still on sale but she's doing like buy two patterns get 30% off so I had to buy two patterns and then the other pattern that I bought this week the third and final pattern that I bought I saw, I, I get it, I get the emails from Wild Violet Stitches because I do love her stuff. I am stitching one of her pieces now, the Fall Leaves and Cat Cuddles Please, which is just a smaller little piece. She typically does these smaller pieces, that's at least the ones that I have. And then she released the slightly larger piece. And I saw this in the newsletter and I don't know why, but I needed to stitch this. I needed to stitch this. So it's called um, Black Phillip the Witch Sampler. And it's based on some text or something from 1630. And to me, it's quintessential New England, like quintessential New England history. If you think about New England, a lot of the times, especially in the fall, Salem, Massachusetts usually comes to mind first. I've been to Salem. I was there a couple of years ago. I want to go back because I didn't get to see nearly as much of it as I wanted to see. And even though this isn't Halloween per se, and she even says that in the description, it still has that Halloween feel to it. So I bought the pattern. I debated on it for a while and it was sitting in my cart on Etsy. And finally, when my husband got paid um, this week, I was just like, I'm buying it. And I did. So I have no idea when I'm going to stitch this, but I'd like to do it sooner rather than later. It might have to be one of my focus projects for next year. I'm thinking maybe for my birthday in March. <laughs> Because again, I think that this one would stitch up relatively quickly as well, because there's not a lot going on. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I thought it was really neat and I kind of really liked it. So that's why I bought it. Uh, do we have to justify purchases? No, no. As someone else said to me in the comments, and as, as I've seen a lot of other floss tubers say, pattern collecting and cross stitching are two distinctly different hobbies. <laughs> So yeah, so that is my stash for the week. Um, plans. I do want to talk plans very quickly. Not really, because I'm just going to here to tell you that next week I will be talking about my October plans. So next week I'm going to share with you um, the pair of, like the socks I want to cast on. I have the yarn put aside. It's just over here on this little table that you guys can't see. I have the yarn set aside for October. October is my favorite month of the year. Not only is it Halloween, but it's just fall. It's just fall. Like it's, that's the month of fall is October. And, um, every year, um, up until the last two years, I used to go to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival to Rhinebeck and the bag, you guys can see right there. That's my Rhinebeck bag from two years ago. I carry it with me every day to work because it's a great big canvas bag with pockets. And I am really disappointed that for the second year in a row, I can't go because of COVID, but I understand, I, I completely understand that I'd rather be safe than go to a, a knitting festival. So fingers crossed for 2022. That's my goal is to go for 2022. But um, I want to cast on a new pair of socks for October. Um, they're not necessarily Halloween. They're just autumn, which is great. And then of course, like I said, I'm going to show you guys my focus project for October, what it's going to be. Rainy and I are buddy stitching it together. So if anyone else wants to join in on it as well, you can. Like I'll let you guys know, of course, then what it's going to be. And yeah, so that's what's coming. Stay tuned next week for the October plans. So last but not least, you guys really enjoyed me doing this last week. So I'm going to continue and I'm going to share with you guys an audiobook of the week. So last week was a book I had read about a month ago, but this week's book is actually a book I finished this week and I really liked it. It was super cute. So I ended up giving this book four stars, but just so you guys know, with book ratings from me, I am a very difficult book reviewer. Like when it comes to books, I have to think that the book is phenomenal for me to give it five stars. I read 265 books last year. I only rated 13 of them five stars. A lot of books got four, four and a half, which are still really, really good. But to hit that five star mark, the book really has to do something spectacular. So I don't throw around five star reviews lightly is what I'm trying to say. So this book did not get a five star. It got a four star, but I really liked it. So it is called Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. So if you guys are fans of historical romance, 
you need to check this one out. So this isn't your atypical Regency. This isn't, you know, that bodice ripper Regency that I'm sure a lot of you are probably used to when it comes to historical romance. This actually takes place in the Victorian era. And Queen Victoria herself is a character in this story. Like there are conversations between Queen, Queen Victoria and the Duke that is in question. So this pretty much is the story of a woman by the name of Annabelle, and she gets offered the chance to go to Oxford University. They just opened Oxford to women. So she is one who gets to go and she's kind of there on a scholarship and she's being, she received the scholarship from this uh, um, society that are suffragettes. So women getting the right to vote. So she works with them and that's part of, for her to get this scholarship, she needs to give so much of her time to the cause essentially, right? Which is of course a very good cause. So one of the first things she needs to do is try and talk to men of influence to get them to try and sway votes so the women can get the right to vote. And she doesn't know it, but the first man that she kind of accosts, if you will, on the street is this duke. His name is Sebastian. The Duke of Montgomery, I think it is. And, you know, she doesn't know he's a duke and all these things. And of course, then a relationship starts. But what I liked about this one was the fact that a lot of the times when you look at historical romance, class is kind of thrown by the wayside, when in reality, that wouldn't be the case. She is literally the daughter of a vicar from a very, very small town. She has no noble blood. He's a duke, like however many in line, duke kind of an idea. And typically in these, you know, it'd be like, oh, let's throw caution to the wind. I'm going to marry you anyway, when in reality, that would have never been the case. But in this one, there is a big discussion in the book about the fact that, yes, he likes her a lot. He might even love her, and she's definitely in love with him. However, he doesn't, he states explicitly, I can't marry you, but you can be my mistress. So, you know, I kind of really like that that was actually, like, discussed as a topic. I, I know it sounds weird, but, I mean, all things work out in the end. It, it is a romance. It has a happily ever after. This book does get spicy, just so you are aware. Uh, for those of you who might want to shy away from that kind of thing. It's not overtly, but there is definitely some adult content in the book. And the narration on this was amazing. I love the narration. So it was narrated by a woman named Elizabeth Janinsky, I think is how you say her name. And she's an, a new to me narrator. And her voice was so pleasant. It was just, that's the only way I can describe it was pleasant. So the way that I think about this, the first voice that popped in my head when I heard her narrating this book. For those of you who loved and watched the movie Mary Poppins when you were kids or as adults or whatever, the old Julie Andrews Mary Poppins. I don't know if there's been any other Mary Poppins, but the Julie Andrews version. Um, the woman who played Mrs. Banks, the mother, who I believe was also a suffragette. Would she have not been? Because she, she had the sash and I remember her going out marching in the movie. Her voice is almost identical to this narrator. Like, it, it just sounds like her talking and her, I remember as a kid watching Mary Poppins and really liking the mother, Mrs. Banks. I think it was because of her voice. It was just so soothing. So yeah, I, just to let, to let you guys know that that's what the narration sounded like. And it was really, really delightful. So if you're in the mood for a good historical romance, check this one out. It's the first in a series. I think there are two more that are currently published and one more that is due to be published next year. So there's my audiobook of the week. Um, so that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, I will definitely be back next Saturday uh, to share with you any uh, progress that I've made on my projects and hoping, I'm hoping I can get the witch done. That's kind of my goal for this week is to get the witch completed and try and get at least down to the bottom um, border of walk fast done. So if I can finish off like down to here on the border, I think I'll be doing pretty good. So those are kind of my big, big goals. And I'd also like to knit to at least the heel on my sock. So we shall see. I have a pretty straightforward week this week. Nothing is happening out of the ordinary. So I like having a chill week with no, you know, <laughs> commitments other than work. Um, but yeah, until my next video, everybody take care and happy crafting. Bye guys.